Today, we're gonna to be 3D printing Warhammer. So hello, I'm Ross, and welcome to Fohammer Videos. And look, when I talk about 3D printing Warhammer, I'm not talking about 3D printing Warhammer models. I'm talking about 3D printing parts that can be used on Warhammer models or in Warhammer games. So if you're from the Warhammer copyright violation inspection team, don't worry, you can leave now and ignore this video. The header image was just a Photoshop clickbait. Good, now that they're gone, we can get into it. And look, in all honesty, we're not gonna be breaking any Games Workshop copyright infringements here, but there are some points to make about 3D printing Warhammer, which requires us to print some things that are clearly inspired by the models GW produce. More on that shortly, but really, I want to answer the question, can 3D printers print Warhammer quality models? And before we begin, let me thank our patrons who are on the screen now. Without them, we couldn't make content like this, so it's them you need to thank. They're already getting early access along with exclusive videos, so please consider signing up. So I recently got my hands on the Anycubic Ultra, which is a consumer grade DLP printer. For those who don't know, DLP uses a projector rather than an LCD. And in my experience, this has shown that the printer is quieter, faster, and sharper than any of my LCD counterparts. Setup was easy, I was able to get this out of the box and configured despite me having crippled my hand this same week. So I was doing all this in pain which only medical grade painkillers would touch. Though I did have one issue which led to the printer doing this every time I tried to print. But that was due to me trying to be too clever for my own good. Following the guide instead, it's a case of loosen the screws, insert a sheet of paper, press a button, tighten the screws and press another button. I did notice though that the LCD screen often struggled to register which button I was pressing. This later led me to cancel a print halfway through. The printer's fairly solidly built, but it's noticeably a budget printer. When compared to something like my Frozen Mini 8K, more on that in another vid, all of the components, including things like the plastic vat, just felt cheap. Thankfully, the metal vat from my redundant Photon S fits perfectly. Like with any new printer, I just wanted my first print ASAP, so I booted up the USB stick and printed what I thought was the coolest looking of the two files included. And then a few hours later, I had this. Not a great start, so let's scrape that off using the included plastic spatula and try the other model. And wow, nothing to do with Warhammer I know, but the detail on this blew me away immediately. A quick wash, rinse, a cure, and boom. I could not wait to start printing Warhammer with details like this. So I wanted the best quality I could get with the resin I had to hand, and that's any Cubics included DLP Craftsman resin. So I started with the settings I got from VOG's channel and his review of this printer. This, however, was for 50 micron print. Looking in various social groups online, I'd seen a lot of people lately stepping down to 20 micron prints for the best detail. But for this printer, I needed to work out those settings myself. So a few prints with Frozen's Exposure Finder. All I did was aim to find the exposure settings at 20 microns where the number of posts matched the number of holes and all was golden. And I was getting good 20 micron exposures at around 1.5 seconds. So once I got this dialed in, I decided to print the most Warhammer thing I could. I'm only joking, I didn't print any Warhammer. So what's the most Warhammer thing you can think to print? Pause the video now and let me know down in the comments. Did you get it right? Yep, that's correct. It's the Emperor of Mankind. I printed Henry Cavill in three sizes. I printed it as large as I could at 100% scale and also in 35 millimeter miniature scale for my Space Marines. And I must say the detail was superb. These look fantastic in my models and even in a bust that I printed on my old Photon S or just as a massive head to look at because it's awesome and not creepy at all. It's not. I think he looks cool as a custodian, and I even reached out to him for his opinion. Alas, he did not respond. Surely he reads Fohammer.com looking for the best Warhammer deals to save money. So anyway, I went on to printing some actual Warhammer stuff. So I printed some parts from our models, and whilst I'm in no way sponsored by them, I need to do a huge shout out to the custom bit for providing the parts for this video. They make some incredible pieces to enhance a unique style in your army. So I printed some Viking and Spartan bits, which I used in my painting guides. And this is just a small selection of what they offer. So I implore you, go and check their site out. Now, I wanna say here that not only is this a great printer for miniatures, but the included resin's really nice to work with. It's not too firm like many resins, which tend to be brittle and break rather easily. 
This DLP Craftsman resin has some really comfortable flexibility to it, and better yet, support marks can be easily cut away and resin can be scraped down in a similar way to what you do with your plastic miniatures. And whilst painting these models, I spent a good two weeks with this printer on non-stop in the background. I printed a ton of stuff, including some Warhammer models. But seriously, I printed a ton of stuff, with my favourite thing being this 10 inch tall Tengen, which to me is to 3D printing what the Matrix was to DVD players when they first came on the scene. It's the thing that truly showcases what it can do. And to show off what detail this printer is capable of, I even printed Tengen at a heroic scale, or 32mm, to match my Warhammer models. And damn, that is detailed. Anyway, back to 3D printing Warhammer that we're not going to print. So look, this is already a divisive topic. Of course it is. A lot of people believe that 3D printing threatens their favourite hobby. But in all honesty, I highly doubt that 3D printing is going to destroy Games Workshop. I mean, there's already dozens of competitor games, proxy models out there, recasts are a very real thing, and none of these things have destroyed the Warhammer hobby. But I still want to answer the question in this video, and that question is, can you 3D print Warhammer quality miniatures? Well, arguably, yeah, and better in many ways. Have a look again at that 3D printed miniature Tengen that I made. Even the 3D printed Henry Cavill heads have more detail than most Games Workshop heads. These are coming out closer to Forge World quality than your plastic miniatures. Take this power sword, for instance, where you can see writing etched into this super thin blade. But the only way to truly answer the question is by printing Warhammer style miniatures. And yeah, we're actually doing it this time. Now, whilst what we're printing here are not dark angels, they are in fact gloomy boys. Having spoken to several other people I believe are more versed in IP law than me, I don't want to showcase these models entirely, just in case it raises any copyright red flags, but I do need to do this to make a point. And just for good measure, I'm going to be sacrificing a similar model so that at least I've made an equivalent financial contribution to Games Workshop. So here's the first issue with 3D printing miniatures, layer lines. It's fine when you're doing a bust or something large, but on a miniature, these things stick out like a sore thumb. So the first model was printed at 20 microns and these layer lines are highly visible. We need to get rid of these. So the second version was printed the same way, but with eight times anti-aliasing. And this was the maximum available in Light Cheese Slicer and it made a marked difference, but the lines are still fairly visible. Call it lychee if you want, but I call the fruit a lychee. The picture of the logo is a fruit. That's a lychee, it's called lychee. If you say lychee in a different accent, fine, call it lychee. I'm calling it lychee, it's called lychee, it's lychee. You know what I mean, stop going on about it. Now, lychee's kind of known for not having the best results when it comes to anti-aliasing. So I exported the supported model and loaded it up in the proprietary but unintuitive Photon Workshop. This allowed me 16 times anti-aliasing, so I sacrificed another model and printed it again. And yeah, it's improved it, and I figured this was the best I was going to get. But the thing is, these aren't even layer lines. You see, layer lines are created by SLA printers because light doesn't travel in straight lines. When you print on an SLA printer, the light cures the resin most intensely at the point where the resin sits on the FEP film above the glass, but then it fades both upwards and outwards. Essentially, whether it's 50 microns or 20 microns, each layer edge is printed outward at an angle, so you get these layer lines forming horizontally up the side of a model. These ones on these models aren't horizontal. This part was printed upright, upside down, but upright. So if I'm not getting layer lines, why am I printing at 20 microns? All that's doing is keeping the laser on longer and doubling the time it takes to print. So I sacrificed another model and printed it again at 16 times anti-aliasing, but this time at 50 microns. And there was no perceivable difference in the two layer heights. So I won't be going back to 20 microns on this printer anytime soon. So when it comes to painting parts or models that you're using in Warhammer, there are two techniques that are gonna really highlight these graduation lines, and those are dry brushing and washes. And yeah, they're the two techniques I use most frequently for the sake of speed. So as you can see here, the wash has settled into the recesses of these lines on the forehead. Same on the shields, these have also picked up paint from the wash. Dry brushing with the Artis Opus Series D dry brushes, don't forget to check out our starter set, normally results in a smooth blend. And when you check these models out from a normal viewing distance, all looks okay initially. 
but when you get close, you can clearly see the graduation. Now, I'm not trying to win any painting competitions with these models, I just want to have fun with my hobby, but these lines are annoying. Now, you can deal with them by just using primers, which act as micro fillers, shoving thicker paint into those recesses, or just coating the area with a gloss varnish before you paint it. But clogging these lines up will also clog other details on the model. Looking back at my Samurai Marines, I was talking to the custom bit who provided me with those parts. He's managed to print these in such a way on a much older printer where the layer lines are completely invisible after primer and paint. So he recommended I update my anti-aliasing settings to add image blur. This fades out the edges on 3D printed parts essentially a further level of anti-aliasing which well look I don't get it fully but it makes the parts look smoother without losing any noticeable detail so after all that are we able to get Warhammer quality miniatures from 3d printers well yes and no from the right angle these models look amazing but there's still the issue of supports and marks that they often leave on your models all that needs to be cleaned up if it's even possible without losing some of the detail but again, looking at the Mini Tengen or the Henry Cavill head, we can already see we can get better detail. And all of this was done with the base resin that you get with this printer. You can explore it further and you'll probably find resin that will give you an even better result. But would I recommend printing a Warhammer army? No, not really. Yeah, it's cheaper to print models, but all the time and effort that goes into it would make this an absolute nightmare. I mean, if you really want to save money to play Warhammer, people have been doing it with rocks and things for years. And if this does actually come anywhere near the point where it's threatening to Games Workshop, they're just going to bring down an even bigger IP hammer. They need to protect their business. But does this mean that 3D printing's got no place in Warhammer? Well, I think I've made it clear, certainly not. For me, 3D printing replaces a lot of what we lost when Games Workshop stopped doing the metal miniatures where you could order individual parts. And yeah, we've had things like the Primaris upgrade sprues, but I've got to be honest, they are incredibly lacklustre. Though to be fair, they have made a step in the right direction with the Black Templars upgrade sprue. But through Games Workshop's products, my Space Wolves look nowhere near as cool or as wolfy as their firstborn counterparts. But with 3D printing and no sculpting skill, once again, I can enhance my models with awesome components. So yeah, you can 3D print a Warhammer quality parts now, and even better quality in many cases. 3D printing really is its own hobby, but when it comes to Warhammer specifically, it's a hobby within a hobby. Albeit a hobby that can lead to some incredible fun and interesting results along the way. If you do want to get into 3D printing Warhammer, I highly recommend this printer. It's absolutely excellent to give you great results for all of your miniatures. This video is not sponsored by any Cubic. I've paid for the printer, but I'll probably try and find an affiliate link that I can put down in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you think about 3D printing Warhammer down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Please consider becoming one of our patrons so we can keep making great videos like this. That's all from me, Fohammer out.